Hello, I'm Honora Wall, teacher, tutor, and education specialist focused on dyscalculia. I also work with adults who have dyscalculia, and I'd like to talk to you today about what dyscalculia is like for adults. First of all, let's discuss what is dyscalculia. This is a math learning disability. It's in the same family as dyslexia or dysgraphia. It's a lifelong condition that occurs in a weakened parietal lobe right about here in the brain. It's different from just being bad at math, although it certainly makes people feel like they are bad at math because it affects where we store and remember and understand math information. What causes dyscalculia? The causes include heredity. You might have been born with dyscalculia, and in the research that is referred to as DD, developmental dyscalculia. Some people acquire dyscalculia after an injury or an accident that injures the parietal lobe, and this is called AD, acquired dyscalculia. Either way, it occurs in the parietal lobe of the brain. The causes of dyscalculia never include laziness, or a lack of trying, a lack of interest in math, or bad teaching. It's not an external condition. It doesn't happen because of the environment we're in. Dyscalculia is a cognitive lifelong condition. You might be wondering if you have dyscalculia or if you just don't like to do math and what the presentation would feel like. Well, if you have dyscalculia, then for your whole life, it's been very easy for you to learn something and almost immediately forget it when it comes to math. So the basic facts for adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing never stuck, no matter how many times you practiced. You may still have trouble with elapsed time, knowing what time to leave your house so that you can get to work or an appointment on time. You might have trouble following or giving directions. Many adults with dyscalculia say that they still have terrible trouble dealing with money and making change. And of course, having dealt with this for your whole life, you probably have a severe case of math anxiety. This is true for many adults with dyscalculia. They feel embarrassed, and you shouldn't. This is a learning disability, and you can find ways that you can succeed in math and work around these issues. Either way, there's nothing for you to be embarrassed about. If you would like to know for sure if you have dyscalculia, this can be tough for adults. The only way to get an official diagnosis is to speak with a neurologist or a psychologist and have a battery of tests run. This can be very expensive. You can also look for online screeners, especially the ones created by Brian Butterworth that are research-based and look for the issues that are specific to dyscalculia. There are a number of online screeners that you can look for, but the main issue is you are bad at math, and you probably already know that. So I would say you can jump into fixing the problem and looking for interventions and programs that will help you. That leads me to my next slide. What can be done if you are an adult and you have dyscalculia? Think about working with a specialist. Find someone who understands dyscalculia and who understands how to best work with adults because teaching and tutoring adults is very different than working with children. So you want someone who understands your needs and your abilities. You can use books, videos, a tutor, hire yourself a teacher, or find any other resource. There are plenty out there at many different price points. Some adults with dyscalculia come to me because they want to fix their math foundation. They want to feel like they can conquer math, and we certainly work on that. Many adults come to me because they want to address how dyscalculia affects them at work, because this can be a barrier to many careers. So you might want to focus only on your day-to-day -day application. Happily, for the majority of you, this will not include fractions and hardly any decimals. So you have very few things to worry about when you think about your bad memories from your K-12 math experience. The best piece of advice I can give you is to keep trying until you find the person or program who works best for you.
The right program or person is out there. You can find them and it is worth your time and effort to get the person who can help you succeed. I do have some resources that I would like to share, but you can look for your own and I recommend that you look at as many as you possibly can. Any resource can be a good resource if it works well for you and any resource can be a bad resource if it does not meet your particular needs. I do have free math videos on a YouTube channel or you can visit my website educalcinc.com for information or general guidance. If you would like to follow my page on Facebook or if you're an educator looking for more training about dyscalculia, you can go to my Thinkific site and I'm happy to give you as much information as I can to help you succeed with your dyscalculia. Remember, dyscalculia does not define you and it does not have to direct your life. You can achieve any goal you set and this includes your math goals. I've worked with a number of adults who have dyscalculia who still can reach the success they are looking for. I know it's possible for you and I hope you keep reaching until you find that success. If I can answer any other questions about this topic for you, please reach out to me at educalcmath at gmail.com. Thank you.